This video will look at mucogingival deformities and conditions that are around the teeth. So let's, th this I know is a mouthful, but let's examine this a lot more closely. So muco comes from mucosa. Um, so think of your mucosa in your mouth. Think of like your alveolar mucosa. Think of your gum. So think of the, the tissues that are surrounding your teeth. And when we're looking at the tissues surrounding your teeth, do you see, or when you're looking at the tissues surrounding your patient's or client's teeth, do you see any deformities? Do you see any unique conditions around their teeth? If so, we need to note them. We need to um, document that in our uh, clinical um, forms. So here is a list of all the different types of mucogingival deformities. And let's look at, um, well, let's start with what a periodontal biotype looks at. What is that? So periodontal biotype is basically is a term that explains the, the, the differences in the bone and soft tissue. So there are three types of biotype. There are three types of um, periodontal biotypes, or three types of tissues that are around the teeth. So let's look at these uh, uh, three types. There's the thin scallop biotype, the thick flat biotype, and the thick scallop biotype. And again, why do we care? Why do we care what biotype our, our patients have? Well, because if they have a thick biotype, that's great because they have thick gums. So thick biotypes or thick gums means that um, they're more resilient to inflammation and trauma. That means you won't see them prone to recession. You won't see them prone to inflammation. So when you have thick gums, we like that. We like the thick keratinized gum. But when we have thin gums or thin scallotype biotypes, or sorry, thin scallop biotype, then what that means is they're more prone to inflammation. They're more prone to recession. So here's an example of a thin scallop biotype. And if you look at the, the tooth over here, you can see that the tooth is more triangular shape. And the reason why it's more triangular, actually, I shouldn't say the reason why, but what we're looking at is when we see a triangular shaped tooth like this, we may notice that their gums or their tissues are a little more thin. They have thin gingiva. And so what does this mean? Well, this means that they're more prone to infection. When you have thin gums and not thick gums, it means that you're more prone to recession. You could even be more prone to inflammation. So we do not like thin scallop biotype. Here's thick, flat biotype. So thick being your key word, we like thick gums because when we see thick gums, they're um, less prone to inflammation. They're less prone to uh, recession. And who has thick, flat biotype? Well, those people that have square teeth. Okay, so you have to look at the shape of the teeth, and if it's more squared, then likely the type of biotype or the type of tissues you would have are the thick uh, fibrotic or thick tough gums. And you tend to also have thick bone as well. So we like seeing thick gums because when we see thick gums, it's keratinized, it's nice and thick for us. And, and these people have less chance of inflammation, less chance of recession. Here's another example of thick scalloped biotype. So the other one was flat because when you look at the papilla, it's more flat. But here we're looking at scalloped, thick scalloped biotype. And here we can definitely see the scalloped, um, the scalloping in the margin. So it's not as flat. If you look at the this biotype where it says thick flat biotype, it's more flat. But when you look at this one, it's not as flat, right? It's more scalloped. You can, you can see the knife edge over here. And so this is happening with uh, people that have slender or long tooth crowns. That's what we see here. And again, that's great. We like seeing these because they have thick fibrotic gums. Their gums are a lot more thicker. The only downside with this one is that they have a narrow zone of keratinized tissue. So the amount of keratinized tissue is a little less compared to the thick flat biotype where they have a broad zone of keratinized tissue like this whole area is nice and keratinized whereas here it's a little more narrow it's a little more thin so that's the periodontal biotype so if you ever get asked you know what type of biotype does your patient have refer back to this um, so that you can figure out so always look at the shape of the tooth and that can help you whether they if they have a slender tooth crown is thick scallop biotype if they have a square shaped tooth Thick flat biotype is what they have, and if they have a triangular, slender triangular um, shaped tooth crown, then they might have the thin scallop biotype. 
Another thing that's in the mucogingival deformity is recession. So anytime someone has recession, we would say that they have a mucogingival deformity. So we would check off gingival recession under the mucogingival deformities. Um, if they have a tension of a frenum, so if you see a frenum pull, you see how this frenum is pulling down the gum and it's causing recession? Same thing here, this frenum is pulling down and it's causing the recession. That is another thing you can check off under mucogingival deformity that your patient or your client has a tension of a frenum or a frenum pull. There are, we used to look at Miller classification, but we're gonna look at the Kairos classification because that is what we use now. So the new period, they're saying, let's look at the Cairo classification of recession. And so sometimes you could have um, patients who have recession and their recession type is RT1, recession type one. What does that mean? It just means that they're, um, they have recession over here on the facial aspect, they have attachment loss and it's three millimeters. Um, but the key thing here is they yes, they have recession on the facial, but they do not, they do not have any interproximal attachment loss. They do not have any um, bone loss in the interproximal regions in between the teeth. RT2, recession type two, this is where they have a little more clinical attachment loss. So instead of three, now they have four millimeters of clinical attachment loss, and they also have interproximal attachment loss. So they probably have bone loss in the mesials and distal. And you can see here, this is the recession is more concentrated on the facial aspect here, whereas here the recession is um, leading towards the mesial and distal. And lastly, RT3, recession type 3, this is where they have significant attachment loss, so 6 millimeters or more, and they have interproximal attachment loss as well. And it gives you the exact number. So here, uh, interproximal attachment loss or bone loss of 3 millimeters, here, interproximal attachment loss or bone loss of 8 millimeters. Okay, so that's gingival recession. Now let's look at vestibular depth. So if someone has, or lack of gingiva, this is if someone has very little gums, you don't see much of the gum here, then um, you would check off lack of gingiva under the mucogingival deformities. Or if someone has decreased vestibular depth. So if you look here, this is like the vestibule, and when you pull down on the lip here, their vestibule is very shallow, right? It's not deep. like. And if you look at your vestibule, it would be deeper, but this person's vestibule isn't as deep, right? So if someone has a decreased vestibular depth, make sure you check that off under mucogingival deformities. Again, we are looking at frenum, like a frenum pull, you would check that off if they have a frenum pull such as this. This frenum is um, causing this gap, right? If they um, do a phrenectomy, they, the gap might not um, be as prominent. Another thing that you would find under the mucogingival deformity heading is gingival excess. So anytime you see excess gums, um, like a gummy smile, you could check off gingival excess. If they have a gingival enlargement, too much gums um, that you see, check off gingival excess. Another word or term rather that you see under mucogingival deformities is abnormal color. And sometimes you can see abnormal color in their gums. And this is not pigmentation that we're referring to. This abnormal color we're referring to is possibly due to a type of surgery, in this case, an endodontic surgery and um, amalgam tattoo. So amalgam tattoo plus the endosurgery caused this abnormal color in their gum. So if this happens to your patient or client, make sure you check that off. Another condition that you would find under the other conditions um, affecting the periodontium is something called prosthetic and tooth related factors. So all this really means is if you look around, if you look at the tooth um, or if you look at the prosthetics, so if you look at the denture or the bridges, any prosthetic is anything um, that had been inputted into their mouth, any prosthetic that had been inputted into their mouth, so implants, dentures, bridges. So if you look at or around these areas, and you see something that can that uh, is not right. So for example, something that's causing more plaque to retain to the tooth or something that's causing periodontal disease to um, get worse. That's when you would check off this area where you would check off that the client has some prosthetic or tooth related factors. So let's look at some examples of prosthetic or tooth related factors. So here are some examples. So look at the enamel pearl. This 
can cause plaque and calculus to retain in that area. And so that is an issue because yes, you can get more plaque retention when you have an enamel pearl. So if your client has an enamel pearl, be sure to check off tooth related factors. If your client has a groove that is exposed and uh, calculus and plaque can easily um, get stuck in there, right? So that's something to keep in mind. And so if this happens to your client, be sure to check off tooth anatomic factors or tooth tooth related factors in your clinical form. If your client has braces, again, we know this is an example of someone who has extremely poor oral hygiene and you can see that by their inflammation and the redness, you know, when they have braces. So if someone has braces and you see that the plaque has been retained in, um, you know, around the braces and the gums are getting angry and reacting negatively, you want to check off. Um, tooth related factors because the braces is causing the inflammation. So again, anytime you have um, a unique situation such as a groove, um, an enamel pearl, make sure you check off tooth anatomic factors because that can predispose, that can cause plaque to um, attach and um, get in those areas. Even tooth malalignment, if you see um, a client or a patient who has a lot of malalignment, a lot of crooked teeth, that's also going to um, be an issue because plaque will be retained in that area. So if you have clients who have tooth mal malalignment, be sure to check off prosthetic and tooth related factors. Be sure to check off that box in your clinical form.